when we looked at these hundred and you know uh, more than hundred companies with seventeen thousand customers, the correlation between what CEOs were basing their strategy on yes versus what was actually creating customer value that correlation was essentially zero. So how does Welcome to an episode of Strategic Conversations. We host insightful discussions with top business leaders and thinkers. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are hosting Professor Vikas Mittal from Rice University. He's a top strategy thinker and researcher. Professor Mittal will be a speaker at the Houston Strategy Forum's upcoming customer symposium. We're really excited to host him. I am Ravi Kathuria the president of the Houston Strategy Forum and author of the management and leadership book, How Cohesive is Your Company and author of Happy Soul, Hungry Mind. Strategic conversations are hosted by the Houston Strategy Forum. If you value these conversations, please hit and like, please hit like and subscribe to the Houston Strategy Forum's YouTube channel. Today's episode is sponsored by Cohesic, a management consulting and executive coaching firm. Thank you for joining us. We're really excited to host uh, Professor Mittal here and looking forward to a great discussion with him. Uh, Vikas, thank you for taking the time uh, to, to, jo to join us today. And we're looking, sir, to host you at this customer symposium, which is going to be an exciting discussion. Oh, thank you, Ravi, for having me here and for um, having me at the symposium. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, Houston Strategy Forum is such a great venue to share some of my research, you know, some of my experiences with companies. So I'm e extremely grateful for this opportunity. Thank yes. you. No, absolutely. Absolutely, sir. We're, we're, uh, we're blessed to have you. Because for, for people who would like to understand more about the the focus of your research, right? And your breadth and depth and what what really gets you excited. Would you share um, what are the things that you are looking at right now and that you have looked in recent years? Uh, where is your focus? You know, so this is a great question. Um, you know, um, I've been working with CEOs doing research in this area for the last 20 years. Okay. And um, what I have come to discover and uh, when I talk to CEOs, when I interview them, what I've come to discover is that CEOs are looking for a fulcrum around which to hang the strategy of their company. And okay. you look at CEOs, they will try many different things. It can be mission, vision, purpose. It can be the latest fad, such as uh, you know green energy. It can be any of the things. But what I found in my research that companies that create and implement a strategy based on customer value are the ones that are successful in the long run. What I mean by that is that they frequently show returns that are 20 to 30% higher than the average cohort. So, so the focus of my work now is to help companies become customer focused in how they design their strategy, how they implement their strategy, and how they make sure that that customer focus becomes the big thing driving their company all around. So, Professor Mittal, if if he uh, called the CEO up right now and said, uh, "Mr. CEO or Ms. CEO, you need to focus on customer value, and that's what uh, your strategy should be based on," they're going to say maybe they'll be more respectful to you, but to me, they're going to say, "Ravi, are you kidding me?" I already know this. What what are you telling me that I don't know? So what is it? What is this knowing doing gap, right? What is this knowing doing? What is it that the CEO knows but is not doing? You know, that's a great point. So, so I'll give you some statistics. You know, I just finished a study of uh, more than 120 companies with more than 17,000 customers. Okay. And we, in that in that study, we did two things. First, we did, you know, like extensive surveys of customers and statistically derived what created value for the customers of these different companies. 
then when you say statistically know, derived what the, what uh, what created value help us understand that because that i think is is fascinating to hear um correct so 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 what that really means is you know um if you were to go to um an apartment building nowadays yes right so 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 apartment building complexes when they go to like uh, people who are like potential renters yes. they'll ask them what would you like in an apartment building yes so 80 to 90 percent of the people say they would like to see a gym in the building so they put a gym in the building huh and when you look at the utilization of that gym yes fewer than 20 percent of the people actually use the gym yes you know so so the the crux of my research is what people say they want or like frequently is not what creates value for them and uh -huh. to understand what creates value for them yes. you have to rely on science and statistics and this is has been a common denominator right so i often say you know to, to be a little bit more aggressive uh, you know if you think about so many companies in Houston that make so many precision tools and all sorts of stuff. Yes. You would never, you would never just say, oh, you know, just kind of make this widget like that. Right. Right. So right. the front line there the is- The engineering so has to be 100%. You will never say 80% engineering and, is and, good and enough. The tragedy of a lot of companies is as, as you move up the ladder. Yes. You know, you go from science to literally voodoo. <laughs> you know, so that's why- you know, so what science has shown that yes. people, most of the time, people cannot articulate what create, people can tell you what they would like or what they want, yes. but they cannot articulate what creates value for them. So in this study, when we looked at these hundred and, you know, uh, more than hundred companies with 17,000 customers, the correlation between what CEOs were basing their strategy on. Yes versus what was actually creating customer value, that correlation was essentially zero. So how does science figure out these customer values that the respondents themselves are not able to identify? You know, so you, you, you looked at potential renters and asked them, uh, is a gym important? And they indicated a gym is important when, when it really is not a value driver for them, right? Okay. So yeah. how does science how does science get in how does statistics get in and identify how does it you know what is the magic that it is doing uh, so yeah so 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 th that would take us like five episodes to go into the science and the math but in short the main idea and this is you know uh, uh, what what we say right like you know uh, derived versus stated needs okay so stated needs are people can state whatever needs they want, right? But derived needs are different because, you know, like people, when they, they, they you know, you go to like an airplane, you might say like, I want this, I want this, I want this. But after you have flown through something, yes, what creates value for you is really different than what you could have set up front, right? So you see this, for example, you know, uh, another analogy when people buy houses. Yes. When people buy houses, the first time buyers almost always buy the wrong house because what they think they want in a house and after they have lived in a house for five or six years, they yeah. realize that a lot of those things don't create value for us. Yeah, and house buying is, is very subjective. I, I, I want to drill into that example that you gave sure. about uh, airline passengers. I don't know if you have done research or have uh, an understanding. What is it that is important to an airline passenger? Because... I look at airlines and what they are delivering or traditionally have delivered and now what they're delivering today, to me, they 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 seem to be reducing exactly the areas that are important to me as a passenger, right? And so I don't know what, what research the airlines are doing or uh, what do you see? What is important yeah, to airline that's passengers? A great point. In fact, like, you know, uh, the next book I have, the opening chapter is all about uh, Southwest. Okay. You know. So if you think about, you know, like we all experienced this, like last year in December, Southwest had this huge blackout for four or yes. five days and all yes. their flights were grounded and so on yes. and so forth. You know, you would be surprised to know prior to that, Southwest chief experience officer, they had a strategy to create customer value. Yes. And their whole strategy was to develop a new type of um, Bloody Mary. 
for passengers. Okay. So I'm interested in your reaction to that. <laughs> One, <laughs> my, <laughs> my, Professor Mittal, you're putting me on record, but I think you saw the reaction on my face. <laughs> you see my point? Yes. You see my point? So, yes. so, so, so the, the big mistake that a lot of CEOs make and a lot of you know, companies make, and this is a revelation, should be a revelation, that you know, and, and CEOs make this mistake throughout every step of strategy, you know, uh, uh, you know, strategy. For example, first, right, like in terms of setting strategy, you just go and ask customers, you see like our salespeople came in and told us customers want this, right? And however you slice and dice it, it always comes to four things. Customers, sales team will come and tell you customers want lower price, they want better quality, they want free after sales service, and they want fastest delivery. Well, if you want to give all four of them to the, the customers, you're never going to make margins. You may be yeah. able to increase yeah. it, right? Yeah. So same thing, right? You're so asking people what they what want tells you, you and is this that... is the mistake yeah. that a lot of CEOs make when they think that yeah. by doing this. Yeah. Same thing, they'll go to employees, right? They'll ask employees, what would you want from us? Well, I want higher pay, less working hours, more autonomy, right? And less accountability. Yes. So this is what will make employees engaged. Well, that is also going to lead to lower margins. So this has become the bane of a lot of strategy work is that it's based simply on just asking people what they would like, which gets at their desires. Yes. And the, the whole structure becomes one of appeasement rather than creating value. Yes. But, you know, and, and to your point, I, I want to expound on that is that knowing the right questions to ask is very important because the the aspects that you described certainly in the in the in the customer example is that that does not did not ask is how the company differentiates itself right how does it truly create superior value right because what it is depending on is the customer's assessment but the customer may not, you know, it's, it's the famous example of the iPod. If Apple had gone and asked its customers, do you want an iPod? They didn't have a clue that they could have music, right? In a small device, which would be mobile, which, which they could stick in their ears and, and be able to listen to any music they want. No customer, unless it was a genius customer, would be able to articulate that. And so Apple would never have developed that product if it if it relied on standard uh, questions, right? And so this yeah, aspect yeah. of revealing Absolutely. what true customer value drivers are, Absolutely. that makes the difference between a mediocre company and, and a superior company. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. And I've always told even my students, you know, uh, I tell them that Steve Jobs is the only person I know of the only CEO I know of who could figure out what creates value for the yes. customers. Yes. Rather than trying to get at what customers want. Yes. Right. And if a CEO yes. can just absorb this distinction yes. that what customers say they want yes. or what my sales team tells me what customers want yes. or what customers tell me when I take them for golf or lunch. Yes. Is almost always zero or negatively correlated. So the study that I was describing, when we correlated these things, in only 12% of the cases, in only 12% of the cases, was there a positive correlation between what customers, what created customer value and what the CEOs thought created customer value. Yes, yes. 30% of the cases, it was negative. And in the mm -hmm. remaining, it was zero. Professor, I cannot wait to host you September 29th. I hope everybody who's watching this video better come and engage with you uh, and learn from what you're saying because the, the things that you're revealing are just, I think, mesmerizing. I mean, CEOs need to pay attention and, and listen to this. Sir, uh, quickly, we have, we have 30 seconds left. What would you, what is the message that you want to share uh, on September 29th? What is your message to the world uh, at that customer symposium? I think the biggest message I would say is that, you know, 
when we say that we really value our customers and we are customer spoke, we are customer focused. I think we need to kind of make sure that we don't trivialize that, that we we actually take it with the seriousness that it deserves. Because as the you know the marketplace is evolving, customers are becoming the most precious asset that a company has. Yes. Right. And to nurture them, you can if you know companies that trivialize this concept of our strategies based on what you know creates value for the customer, they will end up being either mediocre or you're lower than average. Ah, love it, love it, love it, sir. Uh, please join us September 29th at the Houston Strategy Forum uh, in the at the Petroleum Club in downtown Houston. We're going to have an entire day of conversations with billion dollar CEOs, mid-market CEOs, and Professor Mittal himself and get into this whole discussion of precisely, as he said, precisely understanding customer drivers so you can create value that differentiates you in the marketplace for customers. Please join us. Dr. Mittal, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time today and looking forward to seeing you soon, sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.